Hello everyone, Stove here with another episode of Know Your Enemy, the series that shows you what you can expect piloting or fighting against a certain ship in the current version of the PU. On today's episode, we'll be talking about a ship a lot of you have been asking about, the Anvil Arrow. Let's take a look and see how this ship performs against others in the current version of the Persistent Universe. After flying the Arrow for some time and putting it through the trials of combat, I can say without a doubt, at $70, it's probably the best pure fighter for the dollar. So if you're looking for a good pure fighter and want to stay under the $100 mark, the Arrow could be a perfect fit for you. When you first look at the Arrow, you can see that the design stays true to the name. Shaped like that of an arrowhead, this ship has a very clean and sleek profile. The arrow's frame is a staggeringly low 15 meters in length, making it one of the smallest fighters available. Do not let this size fool you, however. This ship has three size 3 hard points and six size 2 missiles. This combined with its small frame make a very deadly combination in the current version. With the good, there has to be some bad. The arrow only has 4,650 HP and also has a couple of weak points. The wings and the tail section of the arrow are vulnerable and will usually be destroyed after only taking one blow to their structure. The good news is, is that you'll only lose one missile hard point if this happens. The gun hard points themselves also seem to be very vulnerable. Many times I'll have one of these hard points blown away during combat. You would think the ones beneath the ship are protected, but more often than not, they were the ones to be shot off instead of the top exposed turret, which of course can be shot off as well. You don't want to take too many structure hits in this ship. If your ship starts to turn red from damage, especially in the cockpit area, you need to start leaving the fight. I come from an EVE background as well as many other MMOs with PvP. In just about all MMOs, especially EVE, one fact always remains true. He who dictates range controls the battle. The arrow demonstrates this with grace and ease. If you look at the stats of the arrow without ever flying it in the verse and simply compare it to other ships on paper, it doesn't look that special. It has the same top speed and the same afterburner speeds of most fighters. However, at 15 meters in length, the arrow has a lot less mass than most fighters, meaning the acceleration will not be matched. If an arrow wants to egress out of a fight, it will, and there's little someone can do about it. Even the most seasoned pilots can be caught off guard and become very flustered when trying to fight a good piloted arrow. I can't wait to show you guys some of the combat footage I got with the arrow, so let's take a look at hardpoint to show you the stats, modules, and best way to set up the arrow, and then we'll get into that combat footage. Okay, here we are talking about the Anvil Arrow in hardpoint. We're looking over the stats and the modules, and the first thing we're going to go over now is it's kind of a weird setup when it comes to the stock weapons. Uh, most of the time when you get a gimbaled weapon, it's only one size lower for the weapon, like here's a size 3, and you get a size 2. But over on the top, you have a size 3 gimbaled turret, but uh, you only get a size 1 weapon, and this is really going to hurt your burst DPS, okay? Uh, so it's not really what you want. If you want to fly with this uh, ship gimbaled, it's really going to be kind of lackluster, although you can do it, okay? Uh, you just know that you're going to have to take way more shots at ships, all right? So knowing that, I do upgrade this to uh, size 3 fixed weapons, and I do use auto cannons. Right now I'm using Quarreler in all the video footage because this is just to come stock on my uh, Raven, all right? So I can pull that off and put these on here without any cost associated to it. So that's why I'm using these. Otherwise, I would use the M5A or the Omni Skies. It doesn't really matter. But when you're talking about burst DPS, uh, the first milestone you'll want to reach is around this 1200 number for these size 3, 3 uh, hard points, okay? Um, when you have this number, you're putting yourself on a competitive playing field with other ships. Even fighting against something like a Saber or a Scythe, you're going to put them in the defensive very quickly. Now, you're going to have to take more shots to kill them than uh, they would you, however. But, of course, you're going to put them on the defensive because this is enough burst DPS to knock down a couple shields and uh, hit that armor and pr put them in the red pretty quick, okay? The second... Uh, DPS number you're going to want on a, on a ship uh, when you're looking at fighters is this 1653. Really, it's 1500 to 1700 mark, okay? And there's a couple of ships that can do this. The Saber, for instance, is one of them. The uh, Black Cutlass can put four size three hard points on this and match this completely. Uh, then the other ones, of course, the Avenger series can put that size four, as well as the 325A, uh, can put the size four and the two size threes on the wings for 1529. All right, anytime, anytime you're fighting uh, something like these right here in your arrow, just know that these one or two shots, you're always away from death, okay? Uh, if they blow through your shields, you need to get away, all right? Once you lose a shield panel, you really can't afford to take another hit on that panel uh, from this type of weaponry, all right? And then, of course, the next milestone and the top milestone right now is that of from a scythe or a glaive with a 2300 from the two size fives, all right? 
Um, this right here, you really can't afford to take any hits from. It's it's going to seep through the shields, and you're almost always going to lose a piece of your ship if you get hit directly by one of these size 5 weapons. So you're always going to want to avoid, especially, a double hit by these two size 5s, all right? It's going to really do a lot of damage to something like an arrow, and depending on where it hits, it can one or two shot you, all right? So knowing what you're fighting and knowing it's burst DPS is also key to flying this ship because in the arrow, while you only you do only have 4,600 HP, all right. Um, that said, it is put in the right places, all right. And we're going to show you that right here. Um, the body of the ship has 2,400, and that is equal to that of a saber. So when you look at a saber, it says it has 10,000 HP, but there is a breakdown like this, and there's more parts on the saber. So all the HP is broken up differently. Now the wings have more HP on the saber, of course. But the body of the saber is around 2,400 HP, and so is the nose around 1,600 HP. So in the areas that really count, because if one of these are destroyed, this is what destroys your ship. Um, in the areas that really counts, the arrow is actually pretty good, all right, considering that it has such a small HP pool. Uh, that said, there's not a lot of surface area, area to the arrow, so if you do take a direct hit, it's probably going to hit one of these sections, or, of course, if you hit the wings, you're losing those because of this low, low HP, all right? So just know that uh, you do have low HP, uh, but it is in the right places, thankfully, and you do live and die by your speed, which of course you do have some of the best roll, pitch, and uh, yaw rates in the game. There's some of the highest. All right, it's very, very responsive. Um, sometimes you're going to have to use boost and afterburner and kind of pulse it a bit to get this ship to respond if you're deep into a turn or a strafe, uh, just to get it going in the direction you want it to go. But after you feel it go that direction, it's going to go there very fast, okay? Um, and it's very responsive in a fight for that reason. Um, it's normal speed 270 is really great. Again, this is equal to ships like the Saber, um, only unmatched by a ship like the Scythe, all right? Uh, and then, of course, the Afterburner at 1235, very standard, and again, only outmatched by Interceptors at 1305, things like that. So not really a lot to worry about here. Just know that at 15 meters in length, this ship doesn't have a lot of mass, so it's a rocket, okay? And uh, it doesn't really show you acceleration rates on paper, unfortunately. Uh, down here, its stock loadout is fine. You really don't have to upgrade the power, although you can and get better power and cooling from it, and it'll give you better sustained DPS. You can maybe double this DPS right here up to about 600 if you do want to change the uh, shields to a Targa or the uh, power supply to a Starheart. That said, I didn't do that at all when I, flowed it, when I flew this ship in the footage you're about to see. So you really don't need to upgrade this ship although you can to make it perform better, okay? Um, just know that always upgrading your ship is going to make it perform better, but this ship really doesn't require it. You're not going to really overheat these weapons a lot. Uh, these weapons shoot very slow anyways. Uh, the only time you're really going to overheat these weapons is if you're trying to shoot something like a 600i with a large shield or something with a buddy, uh, because then, of course, you're going to have to go through about 20 shots to break through that shield, okay? Um, so, with that said, we're done with the stats and modules. There's really not much else to really worry about. Again, this ship is great on power, even with um, the uh, shields recharging, you can see it's 74%. So not really anything to worry about on the power side. Uh, the only thing you really need to worry about is the stock loadout and changing it to something that you like and something that uh, you can aim with and something that does good damage, okay? So you gotta figure this out for this arrow. If you can't fly with fixed weapons, it might be a little bit of an issue for you, okay? So keep that in mind when you're picking out the arrow. Uh, you're probably gonna have to use fixed weapons just to make it reach this 1258 number, all right? So that said, we're gonna get into some combat footage show you some offensive and defensive things you can do with this ship in the verse. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. In this first clip I want to show you a tactic that you're going to need to learn in the arrow. You never want to take a head-on pass with somebody. In the arrow you're going to be doing a lot of booming and zooming because it is a really fast ship and you don't want to get hit a lot. Likewise people will try to do it to you by turning around with coupled mode. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is just spiral in like I'm doing here all I'm doing is flying in with Afterburner, holding down D while tapping Q to give me a nice spiral formation into him. This is going to throw off his aim while I fly at him and allow me to also line up a nice shot when I find my line of rest on him. So this is a still shot of a battle that's in this video a little bit later on, but I wanted to show an important thing for you guys because the arrow is a little bit fragile. And just in general for dogfighting, this is something that everybody should know. Um, in this shot, at first glance, it just looks like I'm lining up a shot on this saber, okay? But I know from experience in a lot of dogfights that I'm actually about to get shot, 
How do I know this? Okay, there's a couple of things, and it's very telling, and you'll always know this once you get it. He is to the left of the little fire icon, closing into the center portion of my screen, right where my crosshair is, okay? Anytime you see a ship in a turn fight, now this is a strafe fight, we're going counterclockwise in a strafe fight, all right? And he's pointing his ship at me, and I'm pointing my ship at him. But anytime you're in a strafe fight, and a ship starts lining up towards the center of your screen and getting closer and closer like this guy is right here, you know you're about to get shot, all right? His shots are, um, are going to land uh, somewhere about the time right about where he is right out now, okay? He doesn't have to get all the way to the center point. He just has to get close to it, all right? Because you're in a straight fight. You're, you're both going in the same direction. The bullet is going to curve into you, all right? Or the laser, I should say. Now, if he was to the right of the little fire icon where my flare icon is, I would be fine. I wouldn't be worried about him hitting me. Those shots would be glowing or glancing off to the left of my ship, and he wouldn't be—he wouldn't have the angle basically to hit me. And I know this just from judging on the position of where he is on my screen. Okay, but as soon as they pass to the right or the left of that uh, fire icon, I know. Oh my gosh, I'm about to be shot now. And this is the case because he is lining up his line of rest. I have lined up my line of rest. We're both going to shoot. But again. Um, I can't afford too many hits because he has four three size three hard points. I only have three size three hard points. He has a lot more HP than the arrow, so I can't afford to take a, a direct hit like this, and I'm not going to. And in the fight, you'll see me roll away because I see this. I do get hit a little bit by, uh, by a glancing blow. I think one of his or two of his lasers hit me, and not I don't get hit by a full barrage of them. But again, this is just something to showcase for you when to know uh, when you're going to get hit, basically, all right, in a strafe fight. This is a very telling sign that a ship is lining up on you and you're about to get hit. All right, here I am at Jump Town hunting, and an organization has decided that they're going to come provide protection for people. So I let off a scan, and I do see that there's a couple of them coming from uh, Grim Hex, and then there's one behind me over here. So I know that I have multiple bogeys inbound. I have two 600 eyes at least with this arrow that I'm quickly engaged by. So now I'm thinking to myself, either I have to quickly kill this arrow and disengage or just disengage altogether because I've lost the element of surprise here and uh, I'm about to get swarmed. So right now I'm just trying to kill this arrow, but as you can see, the arrow is just so tiny and with a, cup, a bit of lag, it just looks like I'm not getting the hits that I want. I am putting them into the red a little bit, but um, I'm not getting the, the good frontal hits that I uh, desire on him on these uh, strafe turns. So I do see something out of the corner of my eye here. I see this other triangle, this red triangle coming into me. And uh, I don't like what I see because that just means that he's lining up for a strafe shot. So I'm going to dip under this 600 eye here so he, his turret gunner can't hit me. And then I'm going to pull some jinx. So right now we're just trying to maneuver away. We don't want to fight anymore. They've come, and uh, they're about to swarm me. So now, only thing on my mind is just to egress. I'm trying to egress the fight and get away to live for another day. I'm really working the afterburner here, and it's going to put me through um, a couple of blackouts because, again, I'm battling G-safe in these high G turns just to try to get away from these guys and I see this Super Hornet on my tail still because I'm cycling targets just to see who's close to me and I do catch a glimpse of a Super Hornet about 2500 away and that's still too close so I still have to uh, do some more evasive jinx and I'm going to do that here and again I'm just trying to pull range from everybody and I see that I've pulled range from most of them I'm just trying to pull range from this Super Hornet and I don't know where the arrow is so these guys are on my mind right now I'm really not worried about the 600 eyes anymore. I'm really worried about this arrow and the Super Hornet. And now it's getting real crowded down here. So we're going to cycle through targets. We see that arrow below us, and uh, he's actually gaining range on us, so we're good. We've actually egressed the fight. And we're going to turn around and scout the situation. And that's what we're up against. Plus a couple more that are hidden. So I don't like the looks of it here. I'm doing a, a quick assessment of what I have and what I see. And uh, at 21% fuel and uh, a red cockpit, I don't want to take this fight. So I'm going to go ahead and egress and repair. 
All right, I'm back a couple minutes later, and I'm assessing the situation. I do see that they have their whole crew on the ground with this Starfarer, but one of the things I do notice is that requiring people to announce their entry and exit from Jumptown. So I'm going to switch up my tactics from attacking the organization that's protecting the people, and I'm going to attack the people that they're protecting. All right. My guess is is they're not very good protectors, and I can cause some angst against them and some infighting amongst them and maybe create some tilt because I know that there's a couple fighters down there and I'm gonna get into a multiple fighter fight versus one, which is myself. So this is gonna help me even the odds in my favor, maybe create some tilt and uh, get them flustered. I need every advantage I can here. So I go ahead and kill the Avenger and I'm seeing a bunch of scans pop off below us. I do think that they saw that. Uh, I know that they see me in the area now and they know I'm not friendly. Because they've seen me once before already, obviously. So now I'm going to cut back and wait behind Jump Town just to see what comes out. I want to see what is interested in me. See if I can pull one or two away and get a nice 1v2 or 1v1. And look at that, it works. Unfortunately for that pilot, and that was the leader, Slither Shot or whatever his name was, uh, he's going to ram me and disintegrate. That's great for us. Now we have a 1v1. We would have had a 1v2 there that could have been tough, but uh, due to some poor piloting on his part, we're going to go ahead and get a 1v1. That was a clean kill in my opinion. And this Warden pilot really doesn't seem like he's up to the task of dogfighting. Um, in my opinion, this guy looks like more of a tag-along than a, a true dogfighter, and uh, I'm going to be kind of a little bit disrespectful towards him. Um, I'm going to let him go into this turn fight. I'm going to pop up my shield. He does get one hit in there, but I'm going to use the shield trick to pop it back up and make sure I don't get hit and then cut behind him and get some clean hits on him. Now, this guy's really not going to do anything to me, and I'm not worried about him at this point after I see this little bit of flying that he's doing, especially uh, right there. He didn't even get one shot off. He, he should have at least been able to hit me there once, but he's really not proving his aim to me, so I'm going to be a little bit disrespectful and go ahead and let him get into this turn fight with me because I know the chances of him hitting me right here are pretty slim. And I'm also keeping him to the right of my countermeasure icon, as you can see. We talked about that a little bit uh, before in the video. So as long as he wasn't getting into that center line, I knew that he wasn't going to land a hit. So we're aggressing from the Warden, and we do get engaged by the arrow again. Because I do want to keep kiting these guys away from each other. And that's the goal here, is just to divide and conquer. And again, this is the arrow we fought before, high-tech farmer, so uh, I see this guy come back into the fray again, and now this is round two for me, so I really want this fight. He's proven himself to me as the uh, pilot that actually has a few good moves amongst them and uh, can hold his own, so I am going to get into this good fight with him here. Now, what he hasn't proven to me is any aim, so while he is doing a lot of evasive maneuvering here, um, he's really not shooting back at me, and he's not landing, and if he is, he's not landing any hits. Um, so, my opinion on what this guy is doing, uh, just from judging and, and being in the verse a lot and knowing what people do, um, it's my opinion that this guy is a dual stick user, and he has two sticks attached to his chair, and he's just really going at it with them. Alright, he's pulling them up, down, left, right, doing little turns with them, and he's causing these motions that I just can't hit with, um, the pip, right? You can see the pip, it's bobbling up, down, left, right. Um, and it's not letting me find a good line of rest. Now you can see a little bit of a line of rest right there, but every time I seem to almost get on it and ambush it, uh, he does a little bobble or a little wiggle and causes me to get thrown off. And there is a timer now that's going off in my head that says, you know, I've stuck around a little bit too long here. There were 600 eyes on the ground. There's a Super Hornet somewhere. I don't know where. Uh, we've engaged the arrow. We've killed the Saber. He could already be on his way back, which he most likely is. And they could have backup arriving before that point anyways. So I know that uh, probably backup arriving for help is imminent. And I need to either think about killing this guy or regressing. So that's what I'm thinking about currently right now, is trying to get this fight over with. Um, and I would have already aggressed at this point, but I did take a glimpse up there in the top right, and I saw that his ship's in the red, and I know that I'm one shot away from getting what I want. So I'm getting kind of tunnel visioned into this kill. He 
He's really pulling some evasive maneuvers now. And it's really hard to keep up with him because he's cutting inside and rolling around. Not giving me the turn fight that I desire. And you see there it is again. He does another little jank and the cut to the inside with the roll out. And you'll see here that my fuel is very, very low. At seven, I stopped using Afterburner. I did take notice that uh, my fuel was at 7%. So I'm not using Afterburner every, anymore, and this is very dangerous for me because I know that it gives him a chance to line up some shots. Although I do realize that he's not shooting at me right now. Again, um, I don't think I've taken any shots from him, but I do hear an unfortunate sound, and that is a sound of another ship entering the fight. And it is that saber that I was worried about coming so we're going to go ahead and egress, and we get lucky because as the arrow was rolling behind us, that saber appeared, and it's going to allow us just to take a straight shot, and we shoot off like an arrow, uh, dead into space. So we're going to hit Super Cruise here and gain some distance, and now I'm just going to look for Grim Hex and wind up that uh, Super Cruise or the Warp Drive and uh, get out of here because my main goal now is to refuel and get back to this fight. Because I cannot fight an arrow and a saber with 7% fuel. There's just no way. All right, so we're back a third time, same people uh, guarding Jumptown. It's now nighttime, and I've noticed the 600i guys have gotten into fighters now. So what I'm going to do is bounce back and forth to different sides of Jumptown, the north, south, east, and west side, and I'm going to start pinging. All right, and then I'm going to fly to the opposite side, and I'm going to ping again. And then I'm going to fly to uh, the perpendicular side, and I'm going to ping there, and then fly to the opposite side and ping again. And what that's going to do is cause them to ping and look for me, um, what I'm hoping is, is that they think that there's multiple ships and or get split up trying to find me. So I'm trying to pull them away from each other right now just by shooting back and forth and doing this weird scanning technique that um, it's really proven to me. Uh, I've used it a couple of times that I can get people split up doing this, all right? Get them to fly different directions, get somebody a little bit flustered, uh, break off from one person, the other person goes back to jump town because he's too scared, he's, he's getting too far away from it, etc. So, again, um, I'm just trying to separate this scythe, all right, from uh, the hornet and the arrow and the, uh, the saber. So I think I've got him separated. I think I've got what I want here. And uh, what I'm going to do to this scythe is I want to clip its wings right away. So I'm going to go ahead and lock on every missile I can. And we do see another target out there. We're going to quickly switch to it just to see what it is. And it is a glaive. That's all right. Scythe is more of a priority than a glaive. It's faster and does more DPS and especially burst DPS. A little bit higher. Okay, both size 5 weapons, but the scythe has one stronger one. So we're going to work on the scythe. We've already shot all our missiles at it. And again, what we're going for with these missiles are is um, to create a lot of turbulence and or knock away one of his wings, which removes one of his guns. And if we can do that, we can switch the glaive and have a, a good fight. Because if, if I take off one of the Scythe's wings, I'm pretty sure that he's going to be rendered ineffective, not going to know how to use that one gun uh, by just itself, and um, I'm going to be able to engage that glaive basically on a 1v1, or a 1v1.5, as I like to call it. So, again, just trying to work on the Scythe. He's trying to get away from that missile swarm, so he's going a little bit higher, and I do get another uh, tally. So there's another fighter that's engaging now. I get a good hit there as he passes overhead. The scythe is in deep red now, and I know that I'm uh, a couple hits away from a kill. And I turn around, and I do see two more bogeys coming at me. It's the glaive and something else. But we finally get what we want. All those missiles are going to catch up and explode and eliminate the scythe and we're going to egress. All right, I was watching chat and I saw something going on at SPK, so I decided to go check it out. And as we get in, we do see a Vandal Scythe. 
and a Saber Comet, and a Gladius. So this is not the best fight to take for one person, um, and we're pretty sure that all these guys are against each other right here. No one is on the same team. This is just a 1v1v1, and now we're going to enter the fray. And knowing the DPS points that we talked about earlier in the video, we know that the Vandal Scythe is the more threatening of the three, with 2300 first DPS, as opposed to the 1600 the Saber has. And it looks like the Gladius is also using a stock loadout. That's another thing we noticed right away. And that's going to let us know that he is the weakest link and we don't need to focus him at all. So right now I'm going to do a couple of boom and zoom passes on this site. My main goal here is, again, I'm trying to clip a wing. And, um, again, the theory is if I clip this wing, uh, the Saber is now top dog and I only have to worry about the Saber, and I can use that Saber to kill the Scythe because it does seem that the Saber is locked into these guys more than myself. And knowing this, I am going to kind of slow down here because I also see the Scythe still uh, tunnel visioning the other guy. I think he's trying to shoot at the either, either the Saber or the... Um, Gladius 2. I don't know which one he's shooting at, but it's going to allow me to get kind of a line of rest here, and I'm going to get some good shots off on him. We are going to get a little bit of a lag spike here, and it's going to catch up. And see, these should be hits, but again, we are lagging a little bit here. And as we go through this turn, you're going to see that lag spike catch up with itself. Right there. So now we're still working on him. We still have those missiles flying around him. And he's not moving away from the missiles. So I know that they're going to explode. And they're uh, pretty much, hopefully, going to give me what I want. Because um, when people don't run away from the missile swarm, that happens right there. He, he flew back into him, and a couple of them did explode, and that's what I got what I wanted. I got that wing clipped, so now I'm going to jet off. So now the Scythe is no longer priority target for me. Uh, the Gladius has now been killed somehow, and now we're flying back towards, and we just want the Saber to kill the Scythe for us. We're just going to let him do all the, all the hard work. We see that scythe now, and I think he's going to engage me, so I'm going to start rolling into him because I don't like what I see. I, th I think he's going to line up this nice strafe shot on me, so I'm kind of rolling away from him, but in this roll I do see that he's not actually going for me. He's picked a new target, and he's going for somebody over here. And that person also decided that uh, he needs to fight me. So a new Gladius has entered the fray. And immediately we do know that he's using repeaters. So he's not really a threat damage-wise to us. But we have a Saber out there too, and that's the one I'm worried about. So I'm trying to kill this guy outright just very quickly. Take a couple shots at him, keep the rolls on. But I see that Saber in the background. You see him kind of uh, strafing around uh, in the distance there. That's not good for us. He's trying to shoot us. So we're going to go ahead and let these guys pass us, and I'm going to pull some G's here because I want to get away from the Saber and the other uh, ship that I just saw and to enter the fight as well. Now there's two other ships other than the Saber. Uh, there's an Arrow, a Gladius, and a Saber that has entered the fight now. So now I'm jinking. I'm going to pull some high G maneuvers again. I want to see if these guys can hang. I want to see if they can shoot. I want to test everybody and see where we're at see where everybody stands and now I'm just gonna roll out of this because whoever's shooting me they're uh, using laser repeaters again so I'm not really worried about it and there we finally get a good look at the arrow that's coming to the fight so we're gonna switch to him for a bit because he is now in my center screen and uh, the other guy really can't hit me so I'm kind of focused on him I'm trying to see what the arrow is doing and uh, if I should be worried about him. I do see that he's also using repeaters. Again, not really much of a threat. And what do I see coming to center view? A beautiful sight, a, a uh, saber, 
profile. This is what we've been looking for, and he's lost a lot of energy in this fight, swarming around and, and doing these weird dives and, and rolls. And it's going to allow me to find that nice center point of rest, and I do end up getting that kill and, and uh, basically pushing off the uh, arrow and the gladius away from the fight as well. They end up egressing and uh, leaving to repair. Okay, that's pretty much going to do it for the commentary section of the video. I have a few more fights for you guys to watch with some music, so I hope you enjoy that. If you do like these videos, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy. This has been another episode of Know Your Enemy, featuring the Anvil Arrow.